Shabbat Shalom, beloved. A word. As I listen to people coming to me talking about this so-called zombie virus, and I can see fear in their eyes, my response, as should be yours, is that we are children of the Most High. What and whom shall I fear that man should do to me? We have all witnessed the horrors of what one virus can do. The coronavirus brought the entire world to a grinding halt and it took massive containment measures on a global scale. Vaccines were developed rapidly to halt the spread of the virus. That was just one virus. At its peak also, its fatality rate was not more than 4%. And now, what would happen if the world comes face to face with an even deadlier strain of an unknown virus? Well, there could be many such viruses hidden deep within the permafrost. The permafrost is a permanently frozen layer or one on or under the Earth's surface. It consists of soil, gravel and sand, usually bound together by ice. And now a warming planet is causing the glaciers to melt. What I mean to say is that our protective white layer is melting more rapidly than we can imagine. Earlier, our main concern was the amount of greenhouse gases being released from the frost melting away. But now we have a different concern altogether. It is the release of dangerous ancient microbes buried deep under the permanent frozen zone. And this is according to researchers who revived nearly a dozen viruses, including one frozen under a lake more than 48,000 years ago in the Siberia region of Russia. The researchers who have revived a number of these zombie viruses, as they're now being called, have found the potential revival of viruses could infect animals or humans. Now, this is quite problematic. Moreover, in a report published in Science Alert, the same was reiterated by the lead researcher. Jean-Marie Olympic from the French National Center for Scientific Research said that these reanimating viruses are potentially a significant threat to public health, although further study needs to be done to assess the danger that these infectious agents could pose as they are eventually released into the atmosphere. Now, this is a cause of concern as a virus is something that is neither living or dead. And it has the capability of being dormant for many years. But now with the permafrost melting away, these viruses pose a significant threat to public health. And clearly, it once again shows the perils of playing with nature. And clearly, more research is needed to evaluate the dangers associated with climate change. Now, to understand what this means, we are now being joined by Sarah Pitt from London. She is the principal lecturer in microbiology at the University of Brighton in England. Welcome to the broadcast, Sarah. Hello. So this is, of course, a rather unique finding. We're talking about zombie viruses. Can you explain how such viruses can survive for millions of years, frozen in glaciers and ice, and how exactly can they be brought back to life? Well, as you were saying there, because the permafrost is, is like a giant deep freezer, a very low temperature deep freezer, viruses can survive under those conditions. We keep them in the laboratory at minus 80 degrees and, and they stay um such that we can grow them again at once we thaw them out and viruses do need to live in organic material such as an animal that died having still carrying that infection and if that happens you know the animal is preserved intact and so all any infectious agents that might be inside it so as everything starts to thaw out the because they've been perfectly preserved all the, the cells inside the animal, the tissues inside the animal start to um, revive and the viruses inside them could also can also revive at the same time. Sarah, also, can you tell us how these viruses could infect other organisms and spread rapidly, even before we can find a way to negate them? Well, the thing about it is that if they're viruses which are thousands of years old, they might be ones that we're not particularly familiar with. They might be closely related to something that we have around now, but, but it won't be something that we necessarily know. So if animals or even human beings get infected with those viruses, they we might not recognise the symptoms. And we also might not have the diagnostic tests ready to go, 
quite soon enough and then that's how things spread so rapidly as you were mentioning there we've just we're well we're still in the experience of covid it spread so rapidly because people didn't necessarily know the symptoms were different from flu or a cold in good time and then it took us a little while to actually develop the diagnostic tests we did a really good job with coronavirus because it is closely related to it, the sars um, COV2 coronavirus was closely related to SARS-1 and other sorts of common cold viruses. So we had a bit of a head start from a diagnostic point of view. Whereas if they're sort of thousands of years old and we don't know anything about them, it will take us a bit longer to get the diagnostic tests. And so the virus could really spread right. before we've really noticed that it's there. Right, absolutely, Sarah. But, you know, while this is being hailed as possibly a scientific discovery, it's a little worrying as well. There's a question of ethics also that comes into play. Humans playing with nature can cause havoc. It's a recurring theme in most Hollywood films, especially when you talk about zombie viruses. Before we begin, beloved, we will honor and glorify our father, Yahuwah of our ancestors, Yahuwah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I ask that you anoint this message this day. Let me decrease that thy spirit of truth may increase in me and anoint the listener and the speaker as we glorify you now and forevermore. Thou who sits on the eternal throne, we give you praise, hallelujah, this day, Father. Thank you for your purifying word and your blessings that you have given us. Thank you for the mercy you are showing Yasharel, forgiving our sins, for we are sinners. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen. Yes, beloved. We are in the book of Sirach. I'm going to read from it. Some people call it the book of Ecclesiasticus. I'm starting in the first chapter. I'm going to move throughout in the first and second chapter. All wisdom comes from Yahuwah and is with him forever. The word of El Elyon is the fountain of wisdom and her ways are everlasting commandments. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah sitting upon his throne. Yes, beloved, while the world is telling us about scientists reviving ancient pestilence and viruses, creating new fears and concerns in the hearts and minds of many unsettling people. We, beloved, will remember there is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah sitting upon his throne. The fear of Yahuwah is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Yes, beloved, whom shall we fear? Yes, yes, who is greatly to be feared sitting upon his throne? The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart. Yes, beloved, when I thought on the most high, my heart was happy and they were shocked that how can you be happy? Aren't you concerned about this virus that they're unleashing, these viruses? There is one, there is one, beloved, one wise. These people who are messing with the lives of multitudes, who think themselves wise, in actuality, beloved, they are very boastful and high-minded. I'm going to share my screen with you. This also know we know we're in the last days. Perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of them own selves. You cannot take it upon yourself to revive a pestilence supposedly thousands of years old and not be without natural affection because it can affect the entire world. And yet that is exactly what they're doing. When we look at the word traitor, they are traitors to mankind, to humanity. They are truly heady. And what does it mean when we see these words heady? Forgive me as I move, I'm trying to get something out of my way. 
They are traitors, beloved. As we watch these last days unfold, we are getting revelations about what the spirit was prophesying and telling us. Traitors, heady, high-minded. When we look at the definition of what heady means, okay, high-minded, all right? The modern usage denotes elevation of mind in a good sense, but formally, and we are talking about the true definition, it is to denote, denote upliftedness in a bad sense, arrogance, pride. You have to be extremely arrogant to revive an ancient virus that you don't know what it can cause, what it can do. And yet they're creating fear and concern in people and they've revived it. Humanity didn't get a vote. Humanity didn't get a voice. Why? Because they are traitors. They are heady. They are high-minded. They are arrogant and conceited, beloved. Yes, yes, I'm trying. I also wanted to find, um, again, even when you say high-minded, I looked at the definition of heady and high-minded, okay? I'm going down. It formerly was used as upliftedness in a bad sense, proud, arrogant, okay? It is spoken about reckless, hasty, headstrong. Reckless makes sense when you have people who are traitors, okay? who are reckless, high-minded, arrogant, conceited, okay, without natural affection. They have broken the truce with humanity to do this without anybody having a say-so, okay? Now, I'm going to move into the book of Jude. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints because they are destroying the earth and all the people in it with their actions. We know if the Lord had not shortened the days and times, no flesh would be left. But for his elect sake, for his Yaqui, for the Kodeshim, he did shorten those days. Yes, beloved. Why? Yes, because the Lord is coming with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. We're going back, beloved. We're going back to the book of Ecclesiasticus. While these people are unleashing these ancient viruses because they are heady, high-minded traitors, okay, conceited. They are reckless. These are not people of good sense. I'm going to go back and read in the book of Ecclesiasticus. There is one wise. These scientists assume themselves so intelligent, they can't even cure COVID if there is a COVID, they cannot cure the common cold. And yet now they want to unleash and revive an ancient virus. And as a matter of fact, it is more than one virus they are unleashing. But in the midst of this, there is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah sitting upon his throne. The fear of Yahuwah is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart. Yes, yes. In the midst of this, beloved, in the midst of this, the fear of Yahuwah for his Yaqid, for his Kodeshim, it makes our hearts merry. Okay, we are not running around fearing and stressed by this. We are aware of it because it is perilous times. But it makes honor and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. 
The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart and gives joy and gladness and a long life. Understand, beloved. You see, the physical man, they don't understand the spiritual man. But we know because we have eyes that see and ears that hear. It gives us long life. It does not say as long as there is no virus of ancient days unleashed. No, no, no. It says as long as we fear and follow the ways of the most high, this is what we shall be doing in the midst of the madness. The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart and gives joy and gladness and a long life. Whoso fears Yahuwah, it shall go well with him at it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor even in the day of his death. To fear Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. It was with us when we were in our mother's womb, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. The fear of Yahuwah is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish. So in the midst of this crooked generation, in the midst of these perilous times, we shall have fear of Yahuwah, the one who is all wise and greatly to be feared. Wait a minute. Because the fear of Yahuwah is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are the gifts of Elohim, and it enlarges their rejoicing that love him. Yes, beloved, we are in the midst of a rejoicing. Yes, yes, yes. The root of wisdom is to fear Yahuwah, and the branches thereof are long life, long life, beloved. There are people I have spoken to multiple times showing me, Miss, did you hear about the, the zombie virus? What I know for a certain is to whom I am committed and to whom we belong. Yes, there is one wise. But the scientists, I don't concern myself with scientists. I'm not going to walk around scared. Wait a minute. Let's finish. I am in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Some people call it Sirach. Set your heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. This is what the word is telling us. Set your heart right and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that you may be increased at your last end. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help you. Order your way of right and trust in him. Ye that fear Yahuwah, wait for his mercy. Wait for it, beloved, and go not aside lest ye fall. Ye that fear Yahuwah, believe him and your reward shall not fail. Your reward shall not fail. I'm talking about in the midst of perilous time with heady, high-minded people, traitors, ungodly people, people who have no natural affection. Yes, yes. Ye that fear Yahuwah, hope for good. Listen now. Hope for good. Do not let these reports of sinners and unbelievers rattle you. Ye that fear Yahuwah hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Ye that fear Yahuwah will prepare their hearts. They that fear Yahuwah will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying we will fall into the hands of Yahuwah. Come on now, come on. And not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. As his majesty is, mm, mm, mm. so is his mercy. Yes, beloved, we are in perilous times. But you see, we know that perilous times shall come. And at this time, what we are seeing is the unleashing of the prophecies. Yes, beloved, we are in the book of Jude. 
And Enoch also, the seven from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. What's he coming for? Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Before we finish that, we're going to go into the book of the wisdom of, wisdom of Solomon. You see, there are those saints who have gone on, who have passed over. They are no longer in the land of the living amongst us. All right. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of Elohim and there shall no torment touch them. You see, after these heathens have destroyed them, laughed them to scorn, thinking they are gone, never to be seen or heard from again. I'm in the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter three, and I'm starting at the fifth verse. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For Elohim proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace has he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks amongst the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and there Yahuwah shall reign forever. They shall judge the nations, beloved. Now let's look at, they shall run to and fro, to and fro. Who? Those that Yahuwah has blessed, those who are with Yahuwah, who have come to him as a burnt offering. Yes, yes, yes. As gold in the furnace has he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks amidst the stubble. Yes, yes, yes. And now when we look in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the expanse. And they that turn many, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the sefer, even to the time of the end, those perilous times. Yes, yes, yes. Many shall run to and fro, and the knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro in the time of the end. That's in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. When we look in the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, starting at the 6th verse, excuse me, the 7th. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks amongst the stubble. They shall judge the nation and have dominion over the people and their Yahuwah shall reign forever. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks amongst the stubble. Yes, yes, yes. Let's line upon line and precept upon precept this thing. When we look in the book of Obadiah, verse 18, the house of Jacob shall be a fire, the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They that and they shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survivor of the house of Esau. Why? Because they're going to be running to and fro, to and fro. Not just those that have gone on to glory, but even the words of Yahuwah are fire. That's why it's burning. Yes, Esau right here on the earth as the revelations of the truth of who Yasharel is, is coming to pass. It's going to and fro. It is in the time of the end. Those who have passed on before us has Yahuwah received as a burnt offering and they shall run to and fro like sparks amidst the stubble. When we look in the book of Jude, we see the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouth speaks 
great swelling word, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage, because they've got the microphone, because they want to set the narration. You've got scientists who are reviving ancient plagues, but Yahuwah knew it. He knew what they were going to unleash. They are destroying his earth. The earth that he said shall endure forever. Wait a minute, beloved. But beloved. Mm -hmm. Remember ye the words which are spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. Who would walk after their own ungodly lust. Yes, 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 yes. These be they who separate themselves central, not having the spirit. They do not have the Lord in their heart. How could you unleash pestilence and be a godly person and have the whole world in jeopardy, not knowing what you're dealing with, a Pandora's box? But you see, beloved, just like it was spoken of in the book of Daniel, just like it was spoken of in the book of Daniel. And many of them that are sleeping in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the expanse and they shall and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the sea for even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and the knowledge shall be increased. Then when we go again, beloved, into the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, starting at verse 7. In that time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks amongst the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Yahuwah shall reign forever. And it is once again supported when we go to the book of Obadiah, verse 18, the house of Jacob mm, shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them and there shall be no survivor of the house of Esau, beloved. And to finish, mm, mm, mm. and to finish, beloved, we shall go back once again. We are going to look at the book of Sirach. Many call it Ecclesiasticus. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah sitting on his throne. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, Yahuwah sitting on his throne. Yes, yes, yes. When we know whom we belong to and whom we serve, whom we serve, while there are people worrying about whether they will live or die, Yahuwah says, wait a minute now, wait a minute. Mm, mm, mm. Trying to find it. The fear of Yahuwah is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of Yahuwah makes a merry heart and gives you joy and gladness and a long life. And a long life. To fear Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Beloved, there is one wise and greatly to be feared. In the midst of these perilous times, while they're unleashing Pandora's box, keep your eye and your faith on Yahuwah, beloved, because there is one wise and greatly to be feared. Yes, yes, yes. Yahuwah sitting upon his throne. All right. Yahuwah sitting upon his throne. Whosoever fears Yahuwah, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor even in the day of his death. To fear Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful. It was in there with you when it was being formed in your mama's womb, and it gives long life. So even though you hear these reports, remember we are running to and fro like sparks amidst the stubble, beloved, in the end. And we are in those perilous times. 
but we know to whom we belong and to whom we are committed because there is one one. It does not matter what these foolish nations say or what they do. Our trust, our faith, our wisdom comes from the Most High. All praise, all honor, all glory unto Yahuwah, our Elohim, our Adonai. He is the Lord of Sabaoth, and he shall fight against those sinners for us. Shalom, beloved. Shabbat shalom. A word.